So in total, how much in payouts have you gotten? 650,000. 650,000? Yeah, yeah. uh, God damn! Yeah, yeah This yeah. guy's doing the thing right here. I invested around $25,000 and I bought a lot of challenges. I am very good at technicals. I've studied from ICT and I think I'm one of the best students. Everything that your mind says to you, it's a fucking lie. First of all, we are we are definitely gonna do some business together. We are we are definitely gonna do some business together. I will say that. All right, guys, welcome to the Funded Trader Podcast. Today, we have a special Italian edition. We're here with Alex Solignani. <laughs> Solignani. And, and he's, here to bring, he's here to bring that Italian energy um, to all of us, all the way from Italy. Um, second trader that has visited us from overseas. So super excited to have you here. Welcome to the podcast. I'm excited as well, Angelo. Thank you for having me. Yeah, so earlier today we had a little little workout. Yeah. <laughs> Got the blood pumping. Very strong workout. Americans are very strong. Do you work out at all? Uh, sometimes, bit? sometimes. I used to, but then um, in the last two years I've been focusing on uh, trading so much. Uh, so I started to lose uh, some uh, uh, some willingness to train, you know? <laughs> when, I was, uh, when I was in Italy, I mean, I guess it depends what part, but there was not many gyms there. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. What, why is that? I, I don't know. I don't know. In my area, there are a lot of gyms. Yeah. I remember when I visited uh, when I was younger, at the time I was playing football. Yeah. I was in like my last year of high school. And when I got there, I was like, where's the gym? <laughs> like it was like right before the season was about to start. I'm like, where the hell is the gym? And they're like, they're like, what gym? And then they like brought, brought me to their garage. There was like 10, like three weights in there. Yeah. And so I'm like doing pull-ups on the fence, like in the, yeah, in yeah. the freaking fruit field or whatever. That was, that was crazy. But but yeah, so all the way from Italy, um, yeah. you're obviously one of the, I didn't mention this, but Alex is one of the top traders in the company. So he recently got a $100,000 payout. Well, 120? 127. 127, $127,000 payout. Yeah. yeah, it's uh, he was joking with me before in the locker room saying that it's uh, not even half what the top trader yeah. has made, yeah. Pasquale which who we're going to be interviewing very soon is going to be coming out here. But obviously it's a huge payout. Yeah, 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 yeah. Huge accomplishment um, that you've made. Have Is that your first payout or has there been others? No, 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 no. I've done uh, multiple payouts from, uh, I think I started earning from prop firms uh, like May 2022. And um, it gradually increased. Uh, since my my attitude in trading gradually increased, so I started increasing the risk uh, per trade. So the the numbers went uh, up uh, as my also as my understanding of markets went up. What was your first payout? How much? I think uh, it was around. Uh, I don't. I think six. The, the f very first it was two thousand, and then six thousand, eight thousand, twelve thousand, twenty thousand. It was quite regular in, uh, in increasing. So in total, how much in payouts have you gotten? Uh, I think from October, I'm up to 600, six, 650,000. 650,000. Yeah, yeah, I'm going for, for the million. Uh, God damn, yeah, yeah, this yeah. guy's doing the thing right here. Yeah, So, but that's not just on TFT. No, no, that's no. That's no, all no. prop firms. I work, uh, yeah, with other prop firms too. Yeah. What's yeah, your yeah. So what's your favorite prop firm besides yeah, TFT? Yeah, uh, MFF. MFF, yes, yeah. Yes, and yes. what's the reason? Like, which account type do you trade on MFF? Mm, evaluation, of, of course. Yeah. Uh, I, like, uh, I like them because the price is low. Uh, they're very trustworthy. And um, also they have 12% um, drawdown. So... I use a, a particular strategy for prop firms, and I will explain you later. Um, and this 12% drawdown is very important for my strategy. Yeah. So give us a little bit of background on the story getting into trading, right? How did you stumble upon trading and how did it go in the way beginning? Okay, well, I, I don't recall exactly how I got into trading. Uh, maybe it was... Um, uh, from Instagram, from social media in general, but I've always had, uh, since I was a kid, this interest in financial markets, this interest in economy and understanding how 
you know, the big players in the markets uh, used to behave, what was their, uh, their reasoning behind investing. So I've, um, I've been fascinated by my whole life uh, to this kind of area. Yeah. And um, in Italy, is the local, I'm not as familiar with the local stock market per se or whatever, right? Is there a local financial market yeah, that you can yeah, trade yeah. within? Yeah, but I, I, don't, uh, I don't really trade uh, Ita- Italy stock markets. Why is that? Is, the vol- is there not, like, not that much liquidity in that? Or? No, there is. There is a lot of liquidity in Italy. We have big funds. Uh, mm-hmm. We have big money sitting uh, in Italy. But uh, I prefer Forex uh, for, you know, there's a... Forex is the most liquid markets, so it's uh, it's better to work on these markets. You have low spread. So you found, like most people from social media. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. Most of my um, of my knowledge about markets come from uh, social media exposure. Yeah, 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 and that's why. Although all these gurus that are on social media, you know, that are just trying to inspire people through posting these yeah. lux- luxury items. That's why they're good and bad because yeah. they're bad because they can be misleading, right? But they're good because they can introduce a lot of people to a new opportunity exactly. Exactly. in the market. And that's that's really why they're there. So I'm just always, I'm fascinated when speaking with people who are from other countries, like especially Italy. I mean, I'm sure there's a ton of traders there. Yeah. And trading yeah. is becoming extremely popular as well. And as someone who has created a community, you know, mainly in the U.S., but also partially overseas, I see there's trading communities in Italy that are popping up yeah. here and there, um, but there, there definitely isn't like a trading prop firm that's Italian based to my knowledge. We have uh, we have uh, one or two, but they're small in numbers and they they created problems for some people. I know people who haven't been paid up, uh, so um, it's not uh, they're not trustworthy. So you were, we were talking a little bit before about Italy in general yeah. and how it's a it's like pretty corrupt place. It can be, yeah, yeah, right. And um, do you anticipate like that changing at all? And what could potentially change, like push that in the better direction? Well, when I was uh, before I started uh, digging um, deep into trading, I was studying a blockchain, you know, with Microsoft. And I, I think that um, blockchain and um, these kind of technologies can help uh, governments to be less corrupted uh, if, they're, um, if they're created correctly. Okay? So in my opinion, uh, technology can help reduce corruption, but um, there's, um, there's a big problem of wanting. You know, if, uh, if people at the top don't want... To lower corruption, it's going to be impossible. It's going to be impossible. Absolutely. Yeah. It comes down to the people with the power. Um, yeah. Ultimately, they have to make the decisions. And if the interests of them implementing new technology doesn't align with their pockets, per se, it might not, it might not occur. Um, so it's just an interesting trend. And the more access I feel like people like you get to these uh, tools online, these opportunities online, to generate wealth, because you certainly generated a lot of wealth, yeah. right? And in a short amount of time, right? It's been, you've made over 600K in how long, a year? Yeah, less than a year. Yeah, less than a year. And um, like, I think the more that the people like you in these countries start to get access to accumulate that wealth, you know, whether you're able to reinvest that into your country or your local economy, or like you were saying, some opportunities that might not actually be in your country as well, as well that is going to shake up the world. For sure. Because yeah, think can. about it. If you didn't have access to the internet, you wouldn't be able, and you t- couldn't trade with a prop firm, what would you be doing? Or just trading in general? Yeah, yeah. Probably trading uh, with other ways, but not with this much of leverage. So leverage allows you to speed up the process, you know? But uh, I I think that if there if there is a lot of corruption in certain countries, people are, are going to start looking away from this country, you know? In Italy, we have also a big problem of taxation. Taxation is very high, is one of the most high taxation. So this is creating problems for uh, our country. We used to have a lot of uh, small uh, businessmen, uh, small um, like small agencies, but right now, uh, these small agencies are, are being uh, 
put into pressure by the government with high taxation that cannot they cannot avoid taxation. So businesses are starting to close down and only the big ones survive. So that's a, that's a negative trend in my opinion. Because yeah. I've seen in uh, other countries, for example, in Africa, you have less, less taxation, less pressure on, uh, um, on, on people. So you, you observe that every family got a small business, every family got uh, a small land where they can grow food. And this kind of economy is much more stable because it's more difficult that if you have, let's say, a crisis, uh, it's more difficult that this country is going to be strongly impacted. While if you have big companies, these big companies, if they fail, they will create very big problems for people. So let's say you have a company that employs uh, 100,000 people. If this company shuts down, these 100,000 people, where do you place them? Instead, if you have small businesses, maybe... Uh, it's uh, it's very difficult for uh, for them to fail all in the same moment. That's, in that's so interesting. So it sounds like um, in Italy there's been a um, rise in government, right? So they're trying to they're trying to tax the citizens more yeah. realistically. Yeah. So there's more government. So you're basically saying less government, less taxes, um, more open like opportunity for small businesses. Exactly. Yeah. I mean that's a conversation that's had in the U.S. as well. That's like politics 101. Right? Yeah. Um, so how did, uh, not to get too deep into this, but how did like COVID impact Italy? Like, I know it was pretty rough there. Right. And it sounds like the, there's, there's now some, uh, negative trends in the country. Like did COVID accelerate those trends? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I think uh, that there was, um, it was created like, uh, too much, um, uh, too much pressure again on people uh, with uh, social media, with television. The, sit the, the situation wasn't really so bad. Uh, of course, when you when you when COVID started to go out, um, there was uh, there was a lot of panic in people. Uh, people started to go crazy about this COVID stuff, and that's normal in in the beginning when you have to face a new situation. But we are very good in health, in medical. Um, so we have high professional people that uh, that could have could have had the opportunity to um, to shut down this thing very fast. But the government continuously um, like created panic basically, and so um, a lot of uh, you know businesses started to close, uh, and uh, this absolutely accelerated the process of. Uh, of a crisis, yeah. So, um, 2022, is, that's when you relatively started prop trading. It yeah. sounds like, or yeah, got uh, successful. Like one year before, one yeah. year, one and a half, maybe one and a half year before. What were you doing before? Uh, before trading? Yep. Yeah, I was, um, I was management engineering in Bologna. And um, at, some, at some point, I, I understood that this wasn't really my... My way in life, I didn't like the idea of working for someone else. So for someone else, I grew up in a family with, uh, we have a lot of businesses in Italy. We have bed and breakfast. Uh, we have, uh, my father uh, is, um, he creates uh, pieces uh, for, uh, for cars, uh, for motorcycles. Um, and uh, my father, my mother is a teacher. They created other businesses like kindergartens, uh, my my grandfather was working wood. Uh, my the other grandfather uh, sell marble to um, USA and um, uh, and uh, Dubai and things like that. So I grew up in a family uh, that allowed me to be open minded about business. You know, you can uh, yeah. you can create your own thing. You can um, employ people, you can uh, live freely, basically. I've never seen uh, my parents working for someone else, you know? So I grew up with this mindset and I knew that uh, I, could, um, I could do something similar uh, in my life. And I've always wanted to be... Did you grow up then though and work for somebody else? No, no, I just no. Uh, I just worked for my parents. Uh, okay. I worked in some. Um, but you went to school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. When I was uh, when yeah. I was when I was young, I used to work uh, with my parents uh, like, uh, as a waiter. Mm -hmm. 
uh, and uh, I used to work um, also in uh, in clubs. You know, I was bringing people inside, uh, creating uh, parties, things like that. I enjoyed this part uh, because I was uh, I was interested in uh, making business in this kind of. We area. all know in Italy the clubbing starts early. Yeah, yeah, starts yeah. young. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so um, it sounds like. You had an entrepreneurial family. Yeah, they, absolutely, they, absolutely. Yeah, they all started businesses. They're all entrepreneurial. I have a question. So how many generations deep does your family go in Italy? I don't Do really know? know. I don't really know. But uh, I think they're all Italians. All Italians uh, and uh, from the same place. Uh, my family is from... Now, what's the reason that you think your... I don't mean to get too personal, but your family didn't immigrate to like the U.S. or whatever, because obviously a lot of Italians, I mean, my family in, immigrated right to the U.S. So it's like, why didn't, why did some immigrate and some stay? Well, I think that uh, my area specific, specifically is a very rich area because we have a lot of lands and, mm -hmm. you know, and I've seen this pattern in a lot of nation. The areas where richness starts to grow is the areas where you have a lot of farming, a lot of animals. And then from this, you start growing like uh, uh, tourism, like services. So I think they, they didn't uh, go away from Italy because there was a lot of job opportunities. Italy yeah. is a, was a very rich country, like in the 70s, in the 90s, when uh, my grandfather, my father uh, created uh, their, uh, their company. There was a very huge market in Italy. Because the people are very good at selling things, uh, creating things. Uh, well, Florence at one point was what? This epicenter of trade in like the entire yeah. world, pretty yeah. much, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. With textiles and whatever else. We yeah. are uh, traders by nature, you know? Yeah. Yeah, except we weren't trading currencies yeah. at, that, at that time, trading a lot of, yeah. a lot of other things. Um, so That's always trading, you know? Yeah. The skill set, it's very similar. You it's, buy low, you sell high. Yeah, so let's get a little bit into the trading, the yeah. strategies then, right? So um, obviously now it seems you have a very conclusively winning strategy. Yeah. You're getting <laughs> huge payouts on the with the company. Um, has your strategy changed a lot over the last year and a half or is it just been relatively the same? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, uh, it changed a lot uh, since last year. My, um, I had a big turning point uh, uh, last year in September when uh, I, I understood that I was very good at trading technically, but I had uh, uh, too much pressure on, uh, on the single trade. So what I've done is uh, I invested a lot of money, like uh, I invested around $25,000 and I bought a lot of challenges, a lot, like 50, 50 challenges, 100K, okay? And I started understanding that if I place 4% risk on a single trade in phase one, it's very easy for me to pass challenges. It just takes one to two. If I lose the first trade, one to three. If I lose the second trade, it just need one to two in order to be back yep. at break even. And this... Uh, Creating uh, created a very good environment for me because psychologically I completely lost the fear of losing a single trade, and this was very impactful for my trading because if you if you don't have any kind of fear, your execution is gonna be way better, way better. Performance is like a thing that you naturally have. Everyone naturally has performance. But you have to remove the blockages, you know? And blockages, a lot of time, comes from emotions. And why do you have emotion in the first place? You shouldn't be emotions about, you shouldn't uh, have emotions in trading. And if you have emotion, it means that the single trade, it's meaning too much for you. So if you have, let's say, a set of 100, tra uh, in my, using my strategy, I have minimum three trades, three trades per account. So if you multiply that by 50 accounts, you have 150 trades to take. And that's the way, and that in my mind, it was the perfect way to work. And that's because the single one can be a losing trade, but over 150 trades, you're gonna see the difference. I, I started to have a lot of accounts passed on phase two, I split the risk in half and I use the same strategy over and over and over and over again. 
And in one year, I accumulated over, I think uh, right now I have um, around 3.4 million in funding and I lost a lot of money in the funded trade in the last two weeks. I lost, uh, I think, uh, three accounts. I made some mistake uh, because I was focusing on other things, but this didn't impact me uh, at all. Like no problem. I lost uh, two or three accounts, 300K, no problem. No problem at all. Because I know right now I have a lot of backup money. I'm building other businesses. So for me, the huge turning point, it was like creating the right condition for me to be like relaxed, calm. When I go into the chart, I am uh, I love trading. I love trading. And I feel like playing when I'm in front of charts. Uh, I love playing just playing, just playing this beautiful game. And when I'm in the moment, I don't really know what I do. I don't really know. I just, uh, I am very good at technicals. I've studied from ICT and I think I'm one of the best students because I've been all in, in uh, technical science. Okay. For two years, days and night, days and night studying continuously. But then I understand that when you have a good technical edge, you n- you need to find ways that allow you to perform well, to allow performance to emerge, okay? And uh, these blockages were was removed uh, by creating the right condition to trade. So that's, a, that's crazy. So a lot of people are at the point at which you're, you were at where they're taking trades and they're scared, right? They're not able to hold the trades. They're... In the challenge, they're getting anxiety, right? You're saying you were able to absolve your anxiety by buying a ton of challenges and yeah. reducing the impact of one trade on your psychology, right? Yeah. How did you decide to just buy a ton of challenges? Like, why was that? Why did you think that would be something that would be positive for you? Mm-hmm. Well, I think that... Because uh, that's a risk to just go ahead and buy a bunch of challenges, right? Yeah, that's a risk if you, if you don't don't really know what you're doing. I I know I'm very strong in technicals. I know I'm very, very, very well versed, but uh, I, I will, uh, I will uh, tell you a story. My first uh, live account was uh, 50,000 with my Forex funding. And I lost 14 trades in a row, 14 trades. And, and in this exact moment, I understand that if I could lose this much of amount of trades in a row, I just can reverse the situation and do exactly 14 trades in a row winning. And that's why this was my mind was creating the losses. It's, uh, it's kind of incredible to, to hear. It's, uh, it seems uh, counterintuitive, but... In every choice we make, we decide if we want to lose or if we want to win. Let's say a new trader in deep inside knows that he shouldn't be trading because it, maybe you, do, you don't know enough about technical science, about um, trading in general, but you decide to take this trade. And this is most probably going to be a loss. While if you are good at technicals, and you decide you want to win, you will absolutely win. You, you will win. Absolutely. So what you're bringing up is a, it's a state of consciousness. Yeah. Of choosing like positive affirmations, right? No, not really positive In affirmation, but um, I, I've seen that when, uh, when I do best, it's like when, I, when I'm outside myself. Let's, let, let's uh, try to explain. Have you ever seen like Messi or Ronaldo playing in television in football? Yeah. When they do the greatest thing, they aren't really thinking about this. It's their natural, their natural performance is let out. So they're not really inside of their mind. They're just flowing, just flowing. Yeah. And that's the exact same thing in trading. So there, there's actually a word for for this, for what that is. Um, I don't know off the top of my head, but it's some sort of, it's some sort of like mental phenomenon when you have this disconnection from self Yeah, and it's almost as if you're watching yourself perform an action and you're not necessarily thinking about it. It's almost like, like some people call it like God mode, like yeah. you're, 
you're yeah. you, you're pretty much just locked. You're so locked in that it's not you anymore. You know, it's your instincts. It's all these things taking over exactly. and it's pushing you to be the essentially the best version of yourself, but ultimately the best version in the world. Yeah, in the yeah. case of these yeah. of these people. Um, but it, it can start very small, right? You don't have to become become God mode. You know, no. it can start very small. I'll give you a, an analogy. The other day, I was playing tennis, right? Okay. And I was doing terrible. Like I was really doing poorly. And tennis is a very mental game because it's just you, right? It's nobody else. It's just, every time you fuck up, it's you. So um, as the game went on, you know, I started to think about when I was serving mentally, you know, how was I talking to myself? What was my inner inner talk? And I realized I was like, wow, I'm being such an asshole to myself right now. Like every time I serve, I think I'm going to miss it. So I started just telling myself, I'm like, you are Roger Federer, right? In his prime. I was like, you are locked in and you're literally going to win this point. Like I just literally repeated that I was Roger Federer and just felt as though I, like if I was him when he's serving, he's very confident. Yeah. any tennis player, right? And the next set, I ended up winning by doing that like positive affirmation or that extra, that mental exercise where to your point, I deep in my core just started to believe that I was going to do better. Yeah. And I did better. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, and the best mode is when the, the chattering of your mind stops for a minute. Like it's always like when when you have your best moments in life, like when you are talking to people, you don't think about uh, you talking, you just live. And that's when, uh, when our best is, uh, is, really, is really found. The perfection is found in, uh, I think, absence of mind. And this is the, you know, the, the philosophy behind, uh, you know, Buddhism, uh, like relig all religion at the end talks about the absence of the mind. When the mind is quiet, the mind doesn't talk to you. You perform in ways that you don't know. You are like channeling something that's outside yourself. That's, it seems very strange to say like this, but uh, I think that's the reality. When we perform better and we look back, we don't recall what we did. We don't recall exactly how how you was moving your uh, your legs uh, or your arm, but you was you was moving perfectly. You're moving you were, with yeah. heart and purpose. Yeah, that's yeah. what that's what's happening, right? Um, it's very interesting this conversation because you think very similar to me. <laughs> that is how I think, and so uh, you're one of the most successful traders that I've spoken with, you know, on the pod, and. To, ha to have this come up in a conversation because on a day-to-day -day basis, all I'm thinking about is how do I quiet the chatter and have a still mind? There's no how. That's and the more you try to quiet your mind, the more your mind starts to chattering. But for me, the user realiz realization was that everything that your mind says to you, it's a fucking lie. It's a fucking lie. If you put it on paper, I love to write. If you put it on paper, what you are thinking, at the end of the day, there's something wrong. There's something wrong in what you're thinking because I don't know why. I don't know why, but every every single thing that your mind says, mo if not every single thing is, uh, is basically a lie. There's a way, because I've thought, done a lot of self-reflection and thought about this, there's a way to cultivate that state of mind. Yeah. The state of mind that you're speaking of where <laughs> it's this, this, it's this deep connection with yourself, but it's also in a way a disconnection because you're not overthinking. Yeah. Right. So there is a way to cultivate this, uh, in my life. That is what I'm not chasing, but I know that that's the truth Yeah, living in that state, right? That's that the truth. And then when I get into these states of anxiety and overthinking, I know that ultimately I'm not taking care of myself, I'm trying to take on too much, right? Or I'm trying to whatever, I'm, you know, overdoing things. So for you, when you're trading, it seems like having that like flow state is extremely important for you. How do you tap in to that? Are there things, are there hobbies that you do to tap in? Or is it just 
it's an ex existential thing. Because I we saw you smoking stogies out here, so you ain't exactly the beacon of health. Yeah. So how are you tapping in to to this flow? Because it's not just like diet, this and that. It's other, no, it's other things. Yeah, it's, uh, it's more like really, really wanting this. Really, for me, it was uh, understanding that th this kind of moment is the only moment if, in my life when I feel uh, at peace with myself. When I'm performing my art, just my art, without uh, thinking about you know fitness, diet, this kind of thing. When I'm in front of the chart and I'm just playing, all my all my bad habits, uh, all my overthinking just stops. So I crave this sensation. I I really want this, and that's why I'm I'm having the results I have because it's not me. It's something outside me, and. Uh, Sometimes I'm able to access this uh, something outside me and I don't really know how, but I'm starting to understand that it's more like wanting, really wanting to be in that state, not because it's good, not because it's bad, but just because you feel life. You, for a single moment, maybe you have, you have lived 25, 30 years, but the cumulative amount of good moments where you feel alive, it's so small. And, you, and at some point I started understanding, okay, I'm at, I am 25, I'm one third to my life. So if I, if I really don't understand how to recreate this kind of thing, this kind of sensation in every moment of my life, I'm really wasting the opportunity. I'm really wasting my life. And this wanting allowed me and allows me to understand. And understanding is the most, uh, I think it's the, the real key. Understanding. The awareness. Yeah. 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 You need, well, first of all, you need to move. There's that, uh, that um, state or province, or I forgot what it's called, but in Italy, there's a place where there's the most centennials that live past a hundred. Yeah. You're saying you're one third through your life, man. You gotta move to, you gotta move to that <laughs> Yeah, thing. yeah. Maybe, one, get, maybe one fourth. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, we gotta improve the odds. Like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Just, man, don't sell yourself short here. But uh, but no, I mean, this is, this is an amazing conversation. You were saying you were trying to think about what it is. I mean, a lot of people assimilate it to God. Like, you know, they believe in God. They yeah. believe in something existential, right? Something universal. Ultimately, that they're it's bigger than themselves, their purpose. Um, obviously, if you don't have purpose, it's very an, an empty life. For, no, I, for I sure. don't really think so because let's uh, hear, let's hear the take. I don't really think in this kind of uh, thing of purpose because we are we are part of nature, and you know, like animal, when you see an eagle flying, the eagle doesn't really have uh, purpose in life. There's no, it's just enjoy living and doing uh, what you want to do, what you enjoy doing, uh, just without forcing anything, without any need of having a purpose, just doing what you like and doing what you really like uh, will allow you to, like when you, when I think that when you look back, you will see that there, there was a, uh, not a purpose, but uh, like your, um, I don't know how to say this, like uh, just you doing the things you like, not really a purpose. Okay. I think that um, it's, it's similar what we're trying, what I'm speaking about, what you're speaking about. It's, it's your it's in a way your destiny. It's you're saying it's the things you like. Mm -hmm. So just compiling and continue to do the things you like over a long period of time. But a lot of people get distracted, right? They get pulled into this direction. They get influenced by this person and they don't do the things they like in their, yeah. in their life. Yeah. Right. And, uh, I just think that that's unfortunate. Yeah. I think that people, uh, need to realize that like you were saying that time is, it's not exactly on our side, right? It's Time flowing. is, it is ticking every yeah. single minute of the day. There is 
time going by. And really what you choose to do with that time is essentially your life, yep. right? That's, that's really what it is. And you've chosen to go down this route of trading. Yeah. Um, where do you see your career going? You know, you've had a lot of success in a short amount of time. Where do, what is the vision from here? My, my primary goal is to live completely free from society, from not needing anything from anyone. And that this was my main focus uh, uh, last year when I started seeing some uh, big results. I told myself, okay, now I want to be completely free. I want to be able to travel the world, world uh, to have all the experience I want. And so I'm just right now, I'm solving the money problem. You know, I'm building businesses. You're I'm building uh, wealth. Yeah. yeah, I'm building wealth. I have uh, already like five, uh, five sources of income that I'm starting to grow into six, uh, seven, ten. And I just enjoy doing business, creating things, ideas. Uh, uh, like as I told you before, I'm, um, I'm investing in agriculture, I'm investing in tourism, I'm uh, creating a brand for furnitures uh, and uh, things like that. I, I just enjoy playing uh, with businesses. I enjoy creating them. I also enjoy the failures because failures will show you maybe why you wanted to fail. And I just, uh, I'm just solving the money problems. And then I want to enjoy life, maybe try to create uh, art, create something useful for the planet uh, and for myself. Because I, I've seen that when I create something, I'm not with myself and I'm at peace. So I want to have time to be free from work, free from, uh, uh, from any kind of anxiety or pressure. Uh, that's my, my primary primary goal right now. It's like solving the money problem and it's going to be completed. I think in one or two years, I'm, uh, I'm absolutely going there. I'm uh, like, you know, when, uh, when you know, really know that what you're doing, doors opens for you. You know, you don't have to go to people to search for opportunities, like opportunities come to you. And I had an example when I was uh, when I was on vacation. I was searching for a big land for agriculture, and uh, and I was really wanting this. And two men came out of nowhere and started uh, talking to me about their businesses. They have like thousands of acres. They proposed me to uh, like to invest on these lands uh, to generate capital for. Uh, uh, for me and for them using uh, so you know when uh, when you really want something i think uh, <laughs> the world the universe uh, will uh, will absolutely provide so the alex solignani tables coming soon yeah <laughs> the furniture coming soon i have a i have a question so do you um do you consider yourself an artist yeah yeah yeah, yeah absolutely uh, what absolutely. what made you come to that conclusion that you were an artist well, because when you when you create art, you understand that you are outside of yourself. So, like when when you have a painter or a footballer or uh, let's say a person who builds furniture, uh, you create art and you understand that you are creating art when when most of your time is spent outside of yourself. So, um, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, because I have a deep theory in, in business that uh that that I'm an artist. I think business is art. Yeah. Is an, yeah. it's an art because there's uh the people, you know, juggling all of these different people working on the project, but then it's also the energy of what you're doing, the the customer, the product, right? Like it's a symphony of all of these things coming together, and you have to remain disconnected from per se this going wrong or this going wrong, like at the end, it will all come together, right? Like yeah. as you're creating, if you're just doing the analogy of like a painting, the painting doesn't look great, you know, halfway through. It's like, what's going on here? But you keep going, right? You have a vision. And as things, like it might be the hundredth, hundred thousandth stroke and all of a sudden it's perfect. Yes, right? exactly. And that whole time it could have looked like a mess. 
So I'm big on that. I think uh, I think business is an art. Um, I mean, bringing up just some history for some Italian history. So I, I'm big in the, the Medici family. Yes. Um, and so uh, like the Cosmo Medici, so the elderman of uh, Lorenzo or his, I think it's his dad or no, it's his, it's actually his uncle or his grandfather, actually okay. it's his grandfather. So he was an artist when he was young, right? Like he was growing up, you know, being educated as royalty and like he really enjoyed art. Like he yeah. wanted to be an artist. And then his father was like, Cosmo, you're out of you and your brother, your brother's an idiot. Like you need to lead the family, right? Like, so there's no, there's no choice to be made. Like you're the one that needs to lead the family. And if you like art, um, take this inspiration, take what you have, that passion and use your intellect and create wealth within the world, create wealth within Florence yeah. and have that start a renaissance period, which can enable artists similar to you, your deep internal in inclination, like similar to you, like enable these artists to create, you know, whatever they'd like to, to emerge, to emerge, yeah, to emerge, to surface in society, to become, you know, distinguished members of society. Like that is your vision, right? Like that's what you need to do. Like, don't just sit here and draw on this piece of paper. Like it can be much grander. Yeah. It can be much bigger if you have that vision and his dad instilling that vision in him to chase that, I mean, resulted in many different, um, in Italy, uh, like obviously the Renaissance period, the entire Renaissance period, but a lot of different buildings being constructed, just a lot of progress like within society yes. in terms of the arts. And so um, what I'm trying to get at is basically like as people and as art, like artists, like there's a lot of people might be listening to this and they're like, I just want to actually create physical art. Right. Like I just want to paint. I just want to sculpt. I just want to cultivate on land. But you need money. Ultimately, you you do need money, in my opinion, like you need wealth in this world. Yeah. What do you, what do you think? Yeah. 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 I think you need uh, you need wealth in order to be free and freedom. Creates art. The more you are free, the more you choose how to spend your time, the more easier it is for you to create valuable things for people but not necessarily you need uh, you need the money to create art you can just uh, take paper and write uh, a poem or, or just write what's in your mind when you suffer for example and you write down things uh, you are creating art there there are countless way in which people can create art and i strongly believe that everyone Every single people, every single person on the planet has a talent, has something inside that is able to access this kind of art. Maybe you are good at music, maybe he's good at creating videos, maybe he's good in trading, maybe he's good in uh, like farming. There are so many, so many arts that you can create and not for all of them you need money, but money I think it's an important part in life because it, uh, it, it buys you freedom. It buys you the opportunity not to do what you don't want to do, the opportunity not to be, for example, I'm here in Miami and most of my friends are working uh, in, uh, like in companies and they don't really want to work in this company. So they're not really free. So it's mo much more difficult for them to create art Okay, mm -hmm. that's uh, that's what I think. Money is obviously important. So my question then is, or not my question, but just like what I believe is that everyone needs to tap in to be an artist. I think everyone needs to find, like you're saying, something they're passionate about, something that fills them with purpose, something where they can express themselves yeah. and be free. And to your point, like not everyone is in is going to accumulate wealth. It just is what it is. It's not going to happen, but there's people. It can happen. It could. Theoretically, it, it can could. happen. But what I'm trying to get at is there's people like you who are an artist, but you're in finance, right? Not only. But let me finish. You're accumulating wealth in finance and you're going to then spread that into other industries, into yes. other endeavors, which you already 
are doing at, yeah. the, at the moment. And this could then, think about it, you're talking about your farm in Kenya. Yeah. If you get that farm and then you hire maybe a someone, lead manager, lead farmer, whatever, right? A position that's going to lead that operation or mo- many positions, right? Yes. Those people on that land, they could end up cultivating that land and that could be their their purpose, their passion, whatever. And they are artists within that yes. environment. You know yes. what I'm saying? Yeah. And they will then be rich and fulfilled yeah. from that, not yeah. from money. The most important thing is that uh, not everyone wants money because uh, money can give you freedom, but it can also trap you, okay? So as long as you are um, able to like to live uh, in a peaceful way, I think that's the goal. Living peaceful. Maybe for you living peaceful mean, means to have 300,000 uh, million. For uh, some other people, it just mean having a small house where you can uh, grow up your family, when you can cultivate your own food. Everyone has different, uh, different uh, understandings and wanting for freedom. But that's it. Yeah, because I, so I have a friend and me and him think very similarly. Like if he were to get into finance and business, he would probably make a lot of money, right? But he chose not to. Yeah. He's like, that's not for me. I'm going to focus on this, right? He wants land. He wants to cultivate the land. He wants to live a very self-sustaining lifestyle through the land, yeah, right? And he wants a to, lot of money. And he wants to create art. And you can make a lot of money, but he actually doesn't want to make any money. He doesn't care about money, right? He's trying to disconnect from the, the idea of money, right? So someone like that, I keep telling him, I'm like, listen, someone like me, I have, I have some money, right? But I'm someone who also thinks fundamentally similar to you in terms of, I feel as though I'm creating art. I'm tapping into that creative energy. So you keep doing your thing and becoming the best at whatever that is, right? If that's cultivating the land, become the best at that. If that's painting, become the best at that. If it's building furniture, become the best at that. Writing poems, music, whatever. And at some point, somebody with wealth is going to recognize that talent and is going to provide you, is going to give you what you want, realistically, ultimately, whether that's land, whether that's money, whatever, whatever it is. So my point is just, you don't need to chase money. Exactly. You just need to become the best at whatever you're doing, right? Money, you have to, money will flow. Money will, uh, literally, will money you. will be like a fountain. And uh, yeah, and I think in America, people are so pushed to like get educated, get a job, get a mortgage. And then they're they're literally trapped. Like yeah. there's a lot of countries, but like you're a slave. You're a modern day slave. You're middle class, you're upper middle class, you're a modern day slave. You have all these bills, right? You have all these responsibilities and things. And so yeah, I just think that there's a a, a world or a life that you can live that's more free, but it it does result from ownership of property of land of businesses right and it also comes through becoming the best at what you do yeah um yes. so yeah i mean i don't know it's it's very interesting because out of all the conversations i've had i don't speak with many people that think similarly to you right um you're only 25 yeah yeah so uh like when you were 18 were you already thinking this way or did something like help it click for you, right? Well, of course, uh, I, I grew up, you know, I've always, uh, since I was a kid, even uh, my family got businesses. But uh, when I was a kid, I didn't spend so much time with my father because he was, you know, busy working on, um, working and working and working to pay debts, uh, to pay taxation and government. And I think that when I was young, my main focus was helping uh, my parents get out of this trap. You know, you, you was talking about uh, this society that create traps for people. And that's what, that's exactly what happened with my parents. They had money, but you know, your money increases 
you start spending more here, spending more there, but you're in the same trap over and over again. Maybe instead of going to Miami Beach for vacation, you can go to Maldives or you can go to Puerto Rico. But at the end of the day, your life is the same as everyone else. So when I was young, my main focus was this, like creating money to allow my, my family to live freely. So from this, I've learned a lot of things. I've learned uh, things in finance through, you know, ICT. ICT is my, um, uh, my teacher. Oh, so, yeah, you, you tweeted, you're like, uh, yeah, Michael, come, yeah. come down to the podcast. Yeah, he, <laughs> uh, he couldn't come this, uh, this weekend. He had some, uh, some family problems. But uh, I started understanding a lot about finance. And then uh, last year also, I want to mention this man that was uh, really helpful with my psychology. Uh, this man is called Kapil Gupta. Kapil is um, an Indian guy who lives in the USA, and he's a coach for the top performance or f- top performer all over the world. This man helped me really understand my mind. Uh, really, really had a, a huge impact on my life. The same as ICT. If you take uh, my financial situation, ICT created. Uh, another completely financial situation. And my mind situation, Kapil Gupta created a completely different environment. I understood so many things, so many things through this man. And I wanna give him a special, special, special thanks. Um, My understanding in a lot of things in life uh, really (laughs) was unleashed. You know, when you you start, uh, it's like, uh, uh, a snowball, you know, it, it, uh, it, it's been created like small piece of snow. And then when it comes down, it became, becomes so big, so big, so big. And this is my understanding. I see my understanding as this, and it's going to, you know, I hope for a destination, like it's going for a peaceful life. That's what I want. What I always wanted, like being at peace, uh, no problem, no stress, uh, Nothing like this. And uh, if you really want uh, certain things, they will be provided to you. And I'm 100%, uh, I'm 100% uh, convinced by, about this because everyone has exactly what they want. Why a person has, uh, let's say, $100 uh, million? Because he wanted, he really wanted this. Why a person has a family? Because he really wanted a family. Why a person is graduated? Because he really wants graduation. What you really want, you have. You already have. And what you don't really want, you don't. You don't have it. If you, when, when you reach the point when you really want this, you have this. Immediately. In some way or the other. Immediately. Yeah, it's a knowing Right? It's a knowing that this is coming. Yeah. Right? It's and I've seen so many times in my life. It's like a pattern. I wanted to be able to make money in the markets. I met ICT. I wanted to be able to understand my mind. I met uh, Kapil. I wanted to be able to speak with uh, you know, different people. I'm here today. I wanted to buy lands. People came to me. Yeah. How is it this possible? <laughs> yeah, that's... um. First of all, we are we are definitely gonna do some business together. We are we are definitely gonna do some business together. I will say that this was like a business meeting. We're locked in. Like we're definitely locked in. Um, I will say this: my partner Carlos and my my partner Carlos and myself, we think this way. In terms of we uh, know we have a knowing that we are gonna get to our goal. Yes, it's not a matter of oh my god, like what's happening. No, it's just. We know where we want to go. We're learning more and more about where it can, where the vision can develop and where it can be. But it's like, we know where we want to go and we will get there, right? The things we need will come to us. Yes. Right? Yeah. Like something, a relationship sours, this one opens. This technology fails, this one is created, right? Like there's always, um, there is always the, uh, the abundance of what we need. 
right? Yes. There, there really is. Um, and that's the way me and him both operate. And we've, we've said this to each other before in our lives. I hate to just say this as frankly as this, but we have both always gotten quote unquote what we wanted because we live in alignment with what we desire, right? We live in alignment with our desires. So I'll give you an example. And if you're not living in alignment with your desires, then things are just going to go terribly for you. I'll give you an example. When I graduated high school, I wanted to go to a certain college, right? And I didn't get in. And there was a path to get there, but I was I didn't want to take that path because it wasn't glamorous, right? Instead, I was like, all right, well, there's an alternative that's here that I could go to, an alternative school I can go to um, that is a little bit below where I wanted to go originally, but it's not really where I want to go. But I'm going to go there just because it's a little bit below as opposed to going like here and then going back to the other school, right? Okay. So I went to this school. I w- went there my first semester of college. Everything went wrong, right? Like I got arrested. Like it was just like bad thing after bad thing was happening to me because I didn't really want to be there, right? Like I was not living in alignment with where I wanted to go in my life. And it was just everything wrong was happening. So what happened? I left, right? I dropped out of school. I went back to the bottom. I went back to community college. You know, I worked my way back up. I built myself back up slowly. And then all of a sudden it started to get realistic that I could go to the place I really wanted to go to, right? That school I really wanted to go to. All of a sudden now I was in position and I started being filled with like a lot of energy, a lot of positive. I was excited, right? I'm living back in alignment. And then once I got to that place, once I got to that goal, I got in, like that was step one. And that's when I was like, all right, what's next, right? What's the next vision? Where do I want to go from here? So you really have to understand, like, listen to yourself. Like, where do you want to, where do you want to be? What do you want to have? And don't stop until you get there. There's no point of not going that hard and going that far. If you really want this, you're not going to stop. You're never going to stop. And that's why I'm telling you, I strongly believe that what you really want, you get in every kind of way possible. And what you don't, you lose. You lose uh, during the path. But you will only get once you're ready. Yeah. Once, once you're ready, boom. Yeah. That's, that's like the part. That, okay, so you want this. If I'll give you an example. If I want our company to be a billion-dollar company, right? In order for us to get there, there are things that I lack. There are weaknesses that I have that need to be brought up. Or people that we need to hire that need to help help us position ourselves to be at a billion dollar company, right? Like it's, it's a matter of wanting, but it's also a matter of being like understanding the awareness, like the situation you're in, like, what do you need to get there? Like, and you're saying that these things will just come to you. And I believe that they will. I believe that there's a willing those things into existence. I also think those things will come to you. It's a combination of both. Um, but like you just, I think you have to be realistic about where you're at and you just have to be open-minded and you have to understand, I might not get to be a billion dollar company tomorrow, but it's going to happen Yeah, at some point. Absolutely. And you just got to be patient. Maybe you just got to ask yourself why you are not already a billion dollar company. Right. Maybe just because uh, you're setting uh, limits, you know? Why 1 billion and not 10 billion per year? Why? Oh, we know. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we know. <laughs> yeah, maybe there are some uh, in finance, especially you have some certain limitation. Yeah. But uh, if you are not here now, it means that there are some variables or some condition that are not uh, present, okay? But there is a way. There is a way to create a $1 billion company. There absolutely is. So if you just understand which variables aren't here right now in this precise moment, maybe the answer will come to you. Answers are very, very, very easy usually. Very easy. The difficult part is creating the right, right questions. Because if you question yourself differently, than normal, your mind, not your mind, but you will start uh, creating different future for you. Your, your, uh, your, your course is different. 
when questions change. If questions are always the same, you don't pro not progress, but you don't uh, you don't don't arrive. You don't uh, you don't create the destination for you. But when questions change, the destination is clear. You see it. You see this destination. You know where you want to be. You will be there. Maybe of course there will need some time, some encounter, some people. But if you really want your company to be there and you ask yourself, why am, am I not there? Why I'm not here? This will change. So uh, you said you did some sort of coaching program with... What's just li name? Just listening. Kapil Gupta. Just okay. listening. It's like a podcast. Free, mat free material on YouTube. On YouTube. And I highly suggest. The, the channel is uh, uh, the, the Truth Seeker podcast. He talks about truth. So he talks about in every situation, you have specific truths. Let's say about, he talks about performance, about family, about the mind, uh, different things. And he questions you. He makes you create questions for yourself. So where does performance emerge for me? Where do, when I see like uh, the no mind state emerging, when, in which condition, and this will create understanding in you. Why my family is not going uh, as I want? Why my relationship are failing? If the question is different, the answer will be different. And different answer create absolutely different path. And that's what I understand through this man. And I wanna, I wanna absolutely thank him. And I didn't, ever uh, talk to him uh, nothing just listen to this podcast uh, and in one year my life completely changed completely in every kind of way because that's amazing the things that he talks about are not common you know are, it's not common to find someone who talks about your mind who talks about performance at top levels and he talks about uh, uh, let's say how to's like when you have to do something there's no how he talks about this, there is no how. So I cannot tell you, for example, how to become a successful, su successful trader because your path will be completely different by mine. There is a how inside of you, but I cannot tell you this how. This how is already here. There is a way for everything, to obtain everything in this life. We have one shot, man, one shot. And when we, when we will be on that bed, this one shot will be done forever. No life, no friends, no, no girlfriend. Okay. <laughs> if you think from the end, the path will be easy, easy. Also when you, when, when I'm like sad, I understand that's just my, just in my mind. But of course, there are things that you cannot avoid, like when uh, a, people, a person uh, that's living uh, with you uh, dies. Uh, of course, you're sad. But what's creating sadness? The, con the mind. The mind. It's like when someone offends you. It's not the moment that creates pain. It's when you go back home, you think about, okay, this man told me, okay, fuck yourself. And you're thinking about that uh, continuously. And it's this moment that creates pain, not the original one. And uh, obviously, when people are trading, there's a lot of pain, self-inflicted. Yeah. Self self-inflicted. Self-inflicted sadness, all this stuff. So um, if anybody is interested, the Truth Seeker you said? podcast. Truth Seeker yeah. podcast, yeah. check out if you want to change your life, <laughs> like Alex. Um, but I do, I do like what you said that everyone, like, if you were to just sit on here and give all the sauce, right? You just give all the tips, all this, the whole strategy. Um, somebody's like still got to sit there and figure it out, right? They got to sit with themselves. They have to create a plan that works for them, right? Like they have to study the material and make it in a way where they can be successful. Easy. So I know you're crediting ICT, you know, with revolutionizing your knowledge in terms of the markets. Um, do you follow his technicals like pretty closely? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. 
I yeah. will I will explain. Financial markets are uh, rigged. They're controlled. 100%. Maybe you have certain markets with low capitalization. They're not so much controlled. Like, for example, when you, when you see some crypto going out for the first time, they're not controlled because there's low volume. But when you have big markets like Forex, like indexes, they're 100% controlled. 100%. ICT explains you how this machine operates, okay? So it's quite easy to create a strategy. The strategy my strategy, for example, is like this, to have a clear understanding of BIAS. So what's the next, as we call, draw on liquidity? There are two possible ways that the machine works. You have the first way the machine is going to go, to liquidity. So liquidity is in highs and lows, okay? The other way, you have inefficiency filling. So when you have movement in markets, this movement leaves small holes in price action, okay? It means that buy side and sell side liquidity are not balanced, okay? There is an imbalance. So the machine just goes for liquidity or filling imbalances. That's bias, okay? And you can have bias for, let's say, the next 15 minutes, or the next hour, or the next uh, four hour, the next day, week, etc. First thing done, 80% of the work here, understanding where the machine wants to go. And if you know how the machine operates, it's quite easy to recognize this uh, pattern, because the machine goes on buy programs or sell programs. If you are able to read the price action, it's quite easy. Then, timing. Timing is fundamental, okay? So you, you need to be in front of charts at the right moment because you know that movement is gonna come when? When there is volume. When volume is entering the markets, manipulation takes place. Then you have the third thing is power of three. Power of three is this concept that was created by Larry Williams. Uh, Larry Williams is uh, the man who has uh, the biggest uh, amount of percentage done in uh, a trading account recorded. So there is a championship, Trading World Cup championship. Larry Williams has the highest record of all times. He basically understood that the machine, when the machine wants to go up, it will go down first and then up, okay? So you have this cycle. You can observe this cycle in the 50-minute candle. You can observe in one-hour candle. When you have one expensive hour, every single candle is like this. If it wants to go up, it will go down first, opening price, going down, then going up. If the machine wants to go down, it will go up from the opening price and then down. Okay? Why does it, this happen? Because the smart money, we want to buy low and sell high. So if we want to buy, where do we buy? A discount. So below the opening price. The opening price, it's like a line that allows you to understand where is low and where is high. And then you start observing the machine creating the same pattern all over and over again. And this is technical science. I will leave for ICT is way better than me in explaining. After you understand power of three, so how a, an expensive candle takes place, you just need entry technique. This entry technique, it's uh, for me, it's fair valuation or order blocks. And this is technical science I will not explain. Like order blocks are like TNT. You know, when a TNT is placed and uh, it's, mm, it's lighten up, uh, after some time, it will explode. You know, TNT placed, light up, explodes and goes up or down. Then when it explodes, it leaves these holes. These holes is fair valuation. It's like places in, in, uh, uh, in price action when you don't have... Uh, buy side or sell side. This is technical science. That's it. The strategy is very easy, very easy to understand. 
And I think that there was a huge, huge, huge confusion created in, uh, in the community because ICT knows a lot of things. He knows a lot of things about the markets. And uh, sometimes he's very complicated. Uh, he hides things, uh, but the, the truth, he, he tells you in the first 10 hours of the course. So he tells you, there is a machine. The machine work with this principle and watching, really watching 10 hours of the first month, you have everything you need in order to be a millionaire. Everything, absolutely. Because you know that the game is rigged and it's, it can do certain things, it cannot do others. So when you have this condition, it's quite easy. But then you have a lot of content, a lot of material, and a lot of unseriousness in the business. You know, many people, it, when, I, when I first started ICT, if you see a person that tells you, okay, financial markets are rigged. It's not a small thing. You got to investigate. Many people don't investigate. Many people just say, okay, that's bullshit. I investigated. This man, I heard from him, his voice. He was, he was telling the truth. And when you investigate and you see that with your own eyes, nobody can take it from you. Maybe there's going to be some times after you understand the machine, but when you understand the machine, you have no limits. No limits. So you did an amazing job breaking that down, uh, to be honest. That was, that was incredible. Um, getting into this payout that you got, right? This $100, $127,000 payout. Um, what was the largest trade that you hit during this, this, uh, this cycle of trading? I don't recall, but I can, t I can absolutely tell you that's not a great result. And I will explain you why. Let's hear it. Let's say you risk 4% in, on an account, right? You do four trades in a whole month. You go positive four trades. That's it. That's what I done. 4% at the end of the month, I was positive four trades with risk reward one to two, one to three. That's it. That's mathematics. The result, it's not so big, but you... You have to understand the machine. I, and I, I know how the machine works. I spent some, so much time <laughs> on the charts that you cannot believe. And I see the same thing over, over and over and over and over again. And it's like I'm learning how to trust my instinct. And this uh, can be easily doubled. Easily, easily, easily. It's very easy. I'm not even... Uh, I'm not even close to perfection. I have low, low, low win rate. I'm just starting to understand when I should trade, when I not should trade, when my mind wants to win, when I want to lose. Like, for example, I had an account with uh, the Funded Trader. It was one month ago. I had around uh, 60,000 profit. And then... Uh, and then I was very tired in this, pe in this uh, period. And I didn't really want to be in front of charts. I just wanted to relax. I knew that uh, I've done my job. I just wanted to be with my girlfriend and relax. But I continued to trade. So every time I was in front of the chart, I decided to lose. And, and this understanding is starting to, to be in my bones. I'm starting to understand, okay, now I can really decide if I want to win or if I want to lose. And then, uh, you know, money, it's just a mathematical game. You take 4%, you multiply it, uh, you, you can create uh, basically how much do you want. You have some limits, you know, but... Some uh, limits we impose. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> In terms of how much capital you can have. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. What, uh, <laughs> what account size did you make this big payout on? 300K. 300. And uh, you said right now you have how much in funding? Uh, Three point so, four. I've lost. Uh, I lost. Uh, I've lost. Uh, I think four accounts in the last days. But you know, it's not a problem. I've I've bought uh, in these two weeks. I'm buying, uh, let's say, hundred thousand dollar in uh, in accounts. So I think uh, like a hundred account, two hundred k. Do you so. wait for like a good promo and then? Yeah, just, yeah, just yeah, drop yeah, yeah. I I wait for promos <laughs> when promos. Uh, it's like buying, you know, canned goods. What's your, you, what's your favorite promo that we've done? 
I like so much when you have uh, like uh, high payout or uh, profits from phase one and phase two, because that's big. You know, if you have three thousand uh, dollar accounts, uh, I like very much this. I don't really like uh, discounts. You know, maybe I save two hundred or uh, things like that, but it's not uh, that much of a thing. I like having huge payouts uh, at the end. And also having, uh, you know, some. Well, when you're in the prop firm elite, you don't care about discounts at this point. Yeah, no. You just care about no, payouts. No, at all, not at all. <laughs> but I'm planning to uh, not leave uh, prop firms, but I, I'm having offers by people. Who yeah. Want so talk me. about. Let's talk about this. Yeah. Yeah. Well, at what point do you leave prop yeah. trading? When when someone uh, asks you to manage capitals that are uh, not uh, not even close to what prop firm can offer you, but if you are risk free you know the most important thing about a prop firm is that when you when you are in the funded stage you have some small risk that's the money you put in to buy the challenge but at the end of the day if i lose uh, at the risk is on me yeah, <laughs> yeah 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 and that's why it's uh, a perfect condition so i'm probably going to keep the keep the accounts working just reduce uh, maybe the uh, the leverage or the the number of trades or maybe instill a copy trading i don't know I don't what know. would be like a a favorable deal for you to manage private capital what's a deal that you would that you're looking for right? yeah very very similar to prop firms so i keep most of the profits you're like i keep nine, you're like i keep 99% no you know? 99 <laughs> of course you uh, you need to leave something on the table but it's you who is doing the job yeah. If, uh, if they uh, they say, let's say 50-50, it's not good because you are not doing anything. And I know I'm not an average person. I can generate so much money, mm -hmm. so much money with consistency. And I've proved that. I've, uh, I'm, I have my Instagram page. I've, I've taken these challenges of 1 million with prop firm in one year. And I'm almost there. Almost there. So I, haven't, I, I haven't seen your Instagram but I mean, it's private. I, I don't I, I like was gonna say, If I pull it up, am I going to see all of a sudden Alex is in Lambos buying stuff all over the place? No, you're a very, no. very humble man. Let's yeah, see. I like... Do you like the finer things? I like, I like privacy. <laughs> I like privacy. And I like to... <laughs> so I figured. To have, a sm you know, small circles. I like to enjoy speaking with everyone. Uh, I want to be reachable by everyone. And I want to have, a sm you know serious people around me because you have a lot of traders but the number of people that are serious is very very low and uh, that's why i keep my profile private i don't post on youtube i don't post on social media because i i think i think that uh, i know i know what i'm doing and i know with my heart so i know money is gonna flowing i don't need to sell courses i don't need to sell mentorship i've done this I've done because I enjoy speaking with people and I enjoy also learning when I teach because when you teach someone else you have a big uh, you know it's very difficult you you know you have big responsibility you have a person in front of you and that's the test when you when you are tested when you know that you can explain something to someone else like it's a child you know my mother always told me my mother is a teacher and she tells when you possess something, you can explain to a child, and uh, that's it. If you can, ex if you cannot explain to a child, of course, trading is not <laughs> it's not very easy to explain to a child. But you could find ways to explain to them, and these ways are the most effective because they are simple, simple ways to make people understand. So I enjoy I enjoy teaching. I. I, I have a small group with 50 people where I teach them, I'm growing them, and I want them to be in my team in every area. It's people I trust, it's people I, I know personally. They came to my house, uh, we go on vacation together. That's what I like. I don't like being uh, in front of, let's say, a million people. On the pod. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, so what's like... To start to wrap things up, what is, um, I'm curious, it seems as though you have uh, a grip on things, right? So you have a grip on your ability to make money, your ability to uh, cultivate a good state of mind. Um, have you thought about 
the future and what this could compound into, right? Yeah. Like where could this where could this go? Like 10 years from now or 5 years from now or whatever, what is like the big one of your big goals? My primary goal is to be myself at complete peace because I know that if I'm focused here, if I cannot change other people. I can I wanted to to change the world, but I I've understood that if you place your attention outside, you're not going to change anything. So my attention right now is to becoming like best best person possible for me. If uh, I know that uh, everyone nature has granted everyone high possibilities. High possibility. And Unlimited I, potential. I want to be I want to be uh like grateful for this opportunity and use this. So I know that if I if I if I grow, if I become like let's say the perfect human, I have imperfect uh, imperfection like I smoke uh, uh, I don't drink, but uh, smoking, for example, is a big problem for me. But I know that if I focus here, everything outside me will, will start taking, uh, not shape, but if there is something good in me uh, and you are near to me, you're going to get this. But if I try to impose it on you, it won't work. It will just work if you see that I'm, I'm okay. So maybe you learn something something from me, or maybe I learn something from you, and that's uh, that that's what I see for my future. I see obviously wealth, of course. I know how to make money. I've I've grown in a family that knows how to make money. I'm I'm okay. I'm financially very stable. I have my car. I'm building my house. Uh, I'm building businesses. So wealth. I think it should not be a problem. But then there is a step up, you know, when when money is not a problem. What do you do with your own time? You enjoy your time. Maybe you grow kids, uh, you stay with your girlfriend, you you enjoy. Just I enjoy nature, I enjoy I've learned a lot of things by Do you want nature. me to answer what you do with your time? Yeah. You continue to work on your skills. Yeah. And your craft and perfect your uh, Everything. your sword. You yeah. Know? Because that's what your character is made up of what you do. Yeah. Ultimately. So perfect the things that you do. Well, listen, it's been an absolute pleasure to have you on the podcast. Seriously. My pleasure. Seriously. You've done an amazing job. The story is amazing. Um, the people will post down below in the description if anyone can find you on Discord, Instagram, whatever, if anyone's interested and wants to reach out. We do ask if you guys liked Alex's story, please share this with a friend, share this with someone else. Um Share with anyone, a trader, you know, could not be a trader and just let them know, you know, Alex is an amazing person. Thank you so and much. He's Andrew. accomplished quite a lot on the funded trader and big things to come. So we look forward to seeing what comes next for you. And uh, thanks for coming out. Thank you. Thank you, everybody, guys. It was uh, really a pleasure to be here. It's uh, it's incredible. I was uh, like two years ago. I didn't have any money. I was like uh, on... I can say at the edge of depression, you know, when there was COVID, I was very, very, very bad. And then uh, the world trading stuff, it changed my life. And uh, if you like trading, you can, and if you don't look too much at money, of course we trade because we need money. But after some time, you understand that you really like this. You really like trading. You enjoy trading because it's like uh, when you play football, you know, you are not with yourself. You just enjoy and this enjoyment of things is what can uh, it can create uh, skill it will create skill if you enjoy that's it trade if you don't quit incredible amazing seriously amazing thank you guys for watching the funded trader podcast thank you <laughs>